Okay guys, let's get right into it. So we open up with this uh, part one of the season finale with Peter talking about how he's in love with Madison and Hannah Ann. And guys, I just don't know how he got here. I do not know how he got here. We watched this season together, right? I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I'm like, where is the chemistry with, with Peter, with either of these girls? Like, I can't find it. I can't find it. Like, up to now, none of us knew who Madison was. All of a sudden, she comes out and she's like this front runner. I didn't know until this episode what her voice sounded like. Like, this show just seems so put together at the last minute. I feel like maybe did something happen with The Bachelor that they really wanted and maybe it fell apart at the last moment? And they just threw Peter in because I'm confused. I'm just like Peter has had more chemistry with the bride of the clan than he has with Hannah Ann and Madison. And let's talk about Barb, who you guys are not feeling, but we will talk about that in um, the second part of this season finale. But Barb is just She's so extra and you can tell that she loves the cameras. You can most certainly tell that she forced Peter to do this because she wanted to be on TV. I reached out to Andy Cohen, not like I know him, but on Twitter. And I was like, Andy, you need to get this woman on The Real Housewives of Orange County because she will give us a show. She is messy enough. She is dramatic enough. She will throw a drink. She will pull a wee ponytail. She will do what she has to do to give us a show because she loves to be on camera. This whole bachelor pilot Peter being a bachelor, all of this stuff was her doing. She is America's stage mom. I am telling you. This woman wanted this moment for herself, but she got it through her son. She's always ready to film something. So when Peter walks in, when he walks in to meet his family in Australia, she's, oh, bud, hey, bud, bud, look at your bud. And I'm like, ma'am, he was away, like, banging some chicks in fantasy suites. He wasn't away at war. Calm down. Calm down. I had to do a little costume change. My dashiki was ripping and none of you told me. I had no idea until I went to the bathroom and I was like, oh girl, you are looking raggedy. I'm looking quarantined because that's where we're about to be. Listen, um, when I wrap this video up, I'm going to have to run to Costco and Target and Ralph's and probably CVS because it's starting to look like we are going to be quarantined. It, it's starting to look that way because all, everybody's jobs have shut down. Like my mom's on her way home, my sister's on her way home, my other sister who's about to leave town, her job put a halt on everything. My cousin is quarantined. Like it's it's happening, guys. So yeah, I'm gonna film these reviews and then I'm gonna head on out to Target and start hunting for groceries. So um, guys, I'm sick of Madison. <laughs> I am sick of her because she has this whole sit down with Peter. And she tells him that she's disappointed in him because he put his feelings before hers. Girl, it's his show. <laughs> it's called The Bachelor, not The Bachelorette. You'll get your time soon. Won't be next season because it's clears. But anyway, she's putting all of this on him like he is the problem in their relationship. And I'm like, no, sweetie, it's you. It's you. You did not tell Peter until Fantasy Suites that you had your womb on lock until marriage. He didn't know that. Everybody else in the house did. You never communicated with this man that you wanted to marry, that you were not sexually active and you did not intend on having sex with him in the Fantasy Suites. You also didn't even let him know anything about your faith. I just, I I'm baffled by the fact that she is getting away with being deceptive because she's a Christian girl from a small town. Get the hell out of here with that. She was playing this bachelorette game and it did not work in her favor. There was no reason for her to sit down and tell Peter that he is the reason why they are having issues when we have not once seen this girl communicate up until fantasy suite that not only she had this faith, that it was a huge part of her life and if he did not believe or respect her beliefs moving forward, they couldn't move forward. The women in the house and their confessionals, they were just like, she has told all of us about her faith and all of her intentions. She has not told Peter the dude that she wants to marry yet 
when it's time for him to make a decision, when he's cut chicks that he's talked to and he actually knows when it gets down to you, you've been putting on this facade and giving him this whole, oh sure, whatever it is you want. Of course, yeah, I love this too. Madison had no opposition until we got here. That is my only problem with her. Listen, I love the Lord too and I have my morals and beliefs. But let me tell you something, when I go out with the dude, I let him know, this is where I stand, this is what I wanna do, this is what I want. Not just with my faith, just within life. Why would you match up with somebody or continue to go out or continue to allow yourself to be courted by someone who does not have your same beliefs if that is so important to you? And I just hate the fact that nobody is calling her out on that. Everybody on Twitter is loving and protecting Madison. And I'm just like, did we watch the same show? Because I'm confused. And say what you want about Peter's mama, but she was right. She was right in this instance. I totally agree with her because she's just saying, if you don't agree with him, if you have your absolutes and he has his, this just isn't going to work. Like you don't agree with things that he does. Obviously he's not on board because I didn't raise him like that. Your faith is very huge for you. My son was raised to be spiritual. Right off the bat, in layman's terms, she's telling this woman that her and her son are unequally yoked. She's letting her know right now. Who knows Peter better than the woman that pulled him out of her womb? She's telling this girl, I raised this boy. I know what he believes. I know what he wants. Is she invasive? Absolutely. That's why they picked this boy for the show because they knew his family was crazy. She's also right. Madison is coming to this woman like she's the bachelorette. That's my problem with her as well. It's not your show. It's the bachelor. You're coming on changing here. Changing the standards, changing the whole rules of the show to fit you. It don't work like that, mama. It don't work like that. You can't come on here at the last minute, tell the dude what you want to just say, oh, I know you love me, but unless you do this, then me and you won't work. Then I won't marry you. You can't do that because you've had your one-on-ones. You've had your time to communicate with this, with this man what you want. And then we have backup with the women in the show saying, she told us everything, but she's not saying anything to Peter. Mom is just like, you guys aren't going to work. I'm telling you this right now and i don't think it was because she didn't like madison i think she was just telling the god's honest truth like you guys don't match and madison keeps on fighting back well yeah i know that this is what he wants but this is what i want as well and that matters yes that does matter madison in the real world this is a trashy reality tv show sweetie you need to go back to where you're from and go find yourself a luke p that's what you want. You came on here for Peter, but you really need to be going in the Appalachian Mountains looking for Luke P. Like this woman is on this show acting like she's the lead when you are a supporting character at best. And you know, another thing that bothers me about Madison, and I think it bothers me the most, is the fact that she keeps on hiding behind her faith. Ooh, that pisses me off. I hate when people do that. She keeps on saying, well, this is my faith and this is my beliefs and nobody's going to make me change that. Honey, it ain't about that. It ain't about that. It's about the fact that you lied, that you were deceptive, that you did not let this man know who you were until he fell in love with you. You can't do that, sweetie. You're going to have to grow up. That's not how relationships work. You can't fake and act like this is the woman that you are and this man that desires you falls in love with you and wants to be with you and then you say, oh, I know you want me as this, but this is who I am and it has to be okay because you love Jesus. Don't do that. Don't do that to Christ. He's not judgmental and he's not going to sit there and trick people to follow him. It doesn't work like that. You're not reading your word. And if you were reading your word, Madison, you would know that you were in a relationship with somebody who was unequally yoked. Peter is calling himself spiritual. You're calling yourself a Christian. They are not the same. You shouldn't even be interested in this man. You should not have even been on this show because you knew Fantasy Suites was coming up. Why are you here? Unless you're auditioning. <laughs> Barb, listen, I'm agreeing with you, but ma'am, you messy. You messy because all of a sudden when Madison starts throwing out the Jesus card, here comes Peter's mama. She's like, you throwing out the Jesus card? I'll throw one back at you. I'll throw in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, I was praying for Peter and an angel came to me and that angel was Hannah. And I'm like, wait a minute, ma'am. You just said that she was spiritual. You was not doing none of this talking to your confessionals about praying and angels and Jesus until Madison started throwing out the Christ card. 
Now, all of a sudden, you've been talking to Jesus, John, Paul, and Saul. Girl, stop it. Stop it. She's also very manipulative because after, you know, uh, Peter's family met with Hannah Ann and Madison, after they met with them, you know, the family made the decision. They all loved Hannah Ann. Rightfully so, because she was the only one who was there for Peter. Madison was there for the bachelorette. Anyway, they're all sitting down with Peter and Peter is already conflicted. You know what I mean? But I feel like his decision at this point is already made because the family's like, oh, we love Hannah Ann. And he's like, great, but my heart is with Madison. Like he's just deeply in love with Madison and the family is just like, no, like this isn't the girl, this isn't the one. And I feel like his mother knew that he was, that, that, that Madison had him, that he was wrapped up in Madison. So she starts doing this thing where she's like crying and she's like, no, oh, she's the one, bring her back home, bring her back home to us. And when she did that, Peter called her out on it right away. He was like, no, don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. That let me know that that's something that she does because as soon as he said that, she stopped and she's like, oh no, okay, I'm sorry, I just, no, that's what she does. And she's probably done that his entire life and he's been too young to speak on it. But now that he's getting older and fighting for something that he wants, that she doesn't approve of, he's calling that out and he's catching it. And she don't like that. Which now explains why in the second part of the season finale, she had a little bit more venom for Madison because Madison had a part of her son or now occupied a part of her son that she used to occupy. Child, Peter got two wives fighting over Here's him. Here's my little theory about why Peter is so in love with Madison. One, she is somebody who is on this show is not chasing him. All the women on this show so far have been chasing him. All the way up into the fantasy suites, Madison was just like, no, I'm gonna flip this around and you gonna want me. I think for a lot of men, it's that challenge. It's that challenge of getting that girl who does not want you, right? I also feel like in the bigger scheme of things here, he's also going after someone who will be an easy breakup. I don't see Hannah Ann as an easy breakup, but we find out later, okay? You can't break up with no Hannah Ann. I feel like Madison is a bit easier, especially if there won't be any kind of sex or anything physical really happening there. I think he found somebody who will be easy to go on press tours with, who will be easy to do this entire bachelor press tour of a year before they silently break up and release it to People Magazine. And then he can go on his way and enjoy the bachelor fame as a bachelor. That's what I think is happening here. I think he found somebody who would be an easy partner. I don't think that Hannah Ann would have been an easy partner with him. She's very opinionated and I think she's just, no shade, just talking, you know, real entertainment tea. I think she's just grimy enough to really try to make this into something that he probably doesn't want to go into. You know, she gives me at the end of the year when they agree to break up, making it this really big thing where, where she goes on paradise and talks about how he broke her heart and she goes on live and she does all these interviews and really turns it into something that he doesn't want it to be she'll turn it into a breakup that he can't control a breakup at the end of this with madison is something that he can control the narrative he would not be able to do that with hannah ann who wants this just as much as he does if not more, and has probably been training for this a lot longer than he has. She would definitely out scam Peter, and he don't want that. I'm gonna be real with y'all, right? I fast forwarded past this entire whisper argument with Madison and Peter. Like, y'all are grown. Why, why, how? You know, but, the, but they are still young. No, Peter's almost 30. Madison is what, 23? I'll give her that. Like, that's like, you know, a little college voice that you put on when you're like a really young girl, but. I just, there was no need. I tried to like be interested in this, but I was like, uh, I gotta move on to something better because this whole, I, I love you, but I just, my faith, my faith, my faith. And Peter, but I really want you. I want you to stay. I don't want you to leave. What? Who was into that? Please, please tell me you saw this whisper argument. It was just like, I need more for my life, especially when love is blind is delivering, baby. See, this is what happens. You got to start hiring 
age-appropriate people. Which is why I think that Claire will be a great bachelorette. Because when you cast people who are ready for what this show is supposed to give, you get a show. You keep on getting these Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and they not ready for nothing but fame. Give us people who will deliver. So Madison is out. She leaves Peter. And can I say, she looked relieved. Like she really looked happy to be like out of this situation. She was trying to like force some tears out, but honey, all that mascara you wear and there was nothing, no, no kind of black pool coming down your face. You wasn't crying over that dude. You was trying to make something happen. It didn't happen. She was ready to go. She was ready to go. I don't think that she was into Peter. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I think that maybe she was originally there for him or maybe she signed up because she thought The Bachelor was going to be Luke P because I think that's her fit. That's the kind of guy that I think that she's been praying to the Lord for. Anyway, I think that maybe something was there. I don't, it, maybe it just fizzled out because, no, I'm lying. I've never seen any chemistry with these two. I don't know how they made it here. I really, really don't. So I wasn't really shocked when she like hopped on the plane and got out of there. Like <laughs> She was like, I'm done. I'm done. I want to be the bachelorette. I, I figured it out. I know what I want to do with my life. I want to be the bachelorette. You are not the dude for me. Because guys, if you remember, I will say this, right? Maybe she was there for him in the beginning, but something happened in the middle of this season. Because if you remember, Madison started to describe the type of husband that she wanted. It wasn't Peter. I'm just like, girl, you keep on throwing out this description and it ain't The Bachelor that you're on the show for. So what is going on? I think maybe at that moment, she was just like, I would do better as The Bachelor rep because this ain't a fit for me. That's what it feels like because every time they had a date, I was just like, this is very generic, very basic, very Chuck E. Cheese. There is nothing here how are you guys at this moment when you're fighting over each other in Australia because in the two days you want to propose to her? How, what, what did I miss? Because I watched this show even when I didn't want to and I could have never planned this journey. This don't seem right to me and y'all know what I say when it don't seem right. It's fake. Something is off about this guys. I'm not buying it. I am not buying it. What do you guys think? Let's talk about it.